بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Welcome everyone to our uh, meeting tonight which I think it's the 21st episode of, the, of this online mega anesthesia course My name is Nahla Awad and uh, I'm so honored to be your moderator for tonight Inshallah, um, we will have um, um, useful and resourceful night as, you, as always. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Saad Mahdi and his team, the founder of this uh, interesting and uh, so uh, useful course for all anesthesia, uh, anesthesia practitioners in Egypt and in the Middle East. Uh, tonight, we will have uh, three lectures, as uh, as you know, all, uh, yani, uh, as it is always uh, the case. And uh, uh, the questions uh, will be answered at the end of the third uh, lecture, inshallah. Uh, we have uh, our, uh, our uh, professor, Samir Al-Ansari, uh, who is the uh, professor of uh, uh, intensive care uh, in Ayn Shams University. Uh, I would, uh, you know, it's an honor to present uh, Professor Ansari. <clears throat> uh, for my generation, he was one name for all of us to look uh, uh, up to. Uh, although we, I, I haven't met him in person, but uh, his effect and all of us is great. Um, Dr. Uh, my professor, please uh, go ahead and start. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Sir uh, Good evening. Good evening, my colleague. Good evening, our attendees, and welcome for you again. Uh, today, I am going to speak about the, some important point related to antibiotics especially inside the ICU. Uh, of course, it is very important and mandatory to know the optimum antibiotic to be selected for a given patient to give a good effect for that patient. And we have general concept which we are going to speak or to deal with about combination therapy, how, when to combine therapy, uh, beta lactam allergy, we discuss also drug level monitoring, erythrol antibiotics, and the discalation therapy, which is very important and mandatory, and the antibacterial cycling in each, in each hospital to decrease the resist resistance of the antibiotic, and also use the pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamics to predict the optimum dose and optimum time. We will discuss some important points of related to antibiotics. And it is very important and mandatory really to write Z, to know the right antibiotic which you select for your patients uh, according to culture sensitivity. And if empirical, you have to select the optimum one, and also you have to select the right dose and the right route, IV or intramuscular or per oral, and also the right time and the right duration of antibiotic. And don't write antibiotic without a certain the dose, frequency, and the timing of a uh, review, at what time you will review this antibiotic dose. And after that, you have to thinking daily in descalation or going down with antibiotic or changing it or decreasing the uh, number of antibiotics and so on. Uh, Today we have many markers for predicting the how at what time we have to start antibiotic in bacterial infection. So not, it's not starting empirically. And one of these markers, which I think most of you know it, is the uh, brocalcitonin. And there are also bromediolin uh, and the other markers, but the most common which we use in most hospitals now is the brocalcitonin level. And every hospital really or every center uh, target uh, a point at which they start antibiotic, at which they in, increase or continue the antibiotic, and at what time we have to stop the antibiotic. And they give us also idea about the uh, progress of your uh, treatment. It is going well, it is going in the right pathway, or you uh, starting the wrong antibiotic, and so on. 
mostly we uh, select we select the, the value of 0.25 to 0.5 microgram per liters, and according, according to which we can continue our antibiotic if the patient is accepting improvement and accepting decreasing of procalcitonin. Also, the pharmacokinetic and the pharmacodynamic, uh, pharmacodynamic parameters of the antibiotic very important to be oriented with that. And we have to be oriented. What is the maximum concentrations, which is the peak uh, dose, and what our concentration? What is the minimum uh, MIC, minimum inhibitory concentrations, which uh, affect every organism? And what is the timing is spending by antibiotic to uh, between the peak and the uh, MIC, and also the duration of the uh, concentration and the pharmacokinetic. You have to know the absorption qualities, the distribution, the elimination, and the effect of your drug which you prescribe to your uh, patient. And as we know, there are antibiotics which depend on concentration. Uh, effect or efficacy, and the other drugs which depend mostly on uh, time concentration or on both factors, time and the concentration effect. For concentration effect, as we know, amino glucosides depend on concentration effect, and so we try to, or we prefer to give it once daily. Other drugs depend on time as Biptezo or Pitalactam, uh, which we would prefer now to give it as infusion to, uh, the, to cover uh, a long time for it uh, to get its effect uh, approaching. Uh, concentration dependent killing activity, as in the, which is the relation between the maximum concentration and the minimum inhibitory concentration, or the area under the curve and uh, MIC as amino glucosides, fluoroquinolones, metronidazole, cholestine, rifampicin, clindamycin. All these drugs we prefer to start with large dose and over long period of time. If given their day, will be better with initial high concentration because it is concentration uh, dependent effect. Uh, other drugs as beta lactam depend on timing, timing effect. On examinations, the only clear and equivocal reasons to use combination of therapy. About, uh, some ask about the combination of therapy. At what time I can use combined antibiotics? You can use combined antibiotic if the bacteria is severely affecting the, your patient or your patient is highly septic, like endocarditis, uh, there is prosthetic device, uh, there is joint inflammation with the device inside. In presence of uh, mycobacteria, typical and atypical mycobacteria, fungi as cryptococcus, in such a situation, and also in empirical uh, order of antibiotics, we can use combined therapy, combined antibiotics. But during directed therapy and according to culture, we have to use one drug only according to culture sensitivity. And so we can start empirically by combination of antibiotics. And after that, we have to discalate to the optimum antibiotic according to the result of the culture, which we withdraw before starting antibiotic management. Uh, also, in some organism infections like severe pseudomonas infection or high resistance in Tyrobacteria, as Calypsella pneumonia carbaminase, we can start to combine antibiotic in such exceptionally situations. Combination therapy for gram-negative bacterial infections, yeah, as I told, empirical therapy, directed therapy, not use, don't use combined therapy, both of our exceptions in highly resistant pathogens. Concept, another concept, drug level monitoring. We don't, we don't monitor every drug, uh, uh, drug level for every drug or uh, for every antibiotic. Only some drugs we uh, monitoring it because it is nephrotoxic or its efficacy depend on its MIC and the concentration, like vancomycin, gentamicin, uh, voriconazole. We are afraid, for, of course, from nephrotoxicity and from the lack of efficacy of these drugs if it is below the target level or below the trough level. Other drug level monitoring can be useful, of course, no, not, uh, I mean it is not useful, useful, but it is not standardized and that's not tested. But the most common drugs which we can, you can, we have to ascertain the level of it or trough, its trough level 
is <coughs> vancomycin, gentamicin, and voriconazole. Uh, uh, about aerosolized antibodies for treatment, we have, of course, we, some of us may using it in some resistant disease or some severe RDS patients as uh, influenza pneumonia or a patient with gram-negative pneumonia or patient with respiratory syncytial virus infections, severe one, or ventilator-associated pneumonia, we can use aerosolized drugs. But we have to take care. This aerosolization may promote bronchus bath, may promote uh, some asthmatic attacks in some sense patients, and so we have to be cautious during using aerosolized and to, we can use uh, aerosolized tobramycin or asterionam, monobactam, in such a situation as pseudomonas lung disease in cases of cystic uh, fibrosis. Uh, after that, I can I wanted to uh, give some words about the uh, uh, different group of antibiotics. As we know, we have the beta-lactam, we have the uh, beta-lactam drugs, we have the carbapenem, we have fluoroquinolones, we have the metrolides. We have many, many uh, groups of antibiotics. We speak first about the beta-lactam, just uh, short notes about every group. Uh, beta-lactam, as you know, uh, contains this beta-lactam ring, and all beta-lactam drugs like kefalosporins and like penicillins and as Tyrionam or Monobactam, uh, uh, they have common uh, characters as presence of uh, beta lactam ring, this one, and also they exhibiting some allergy, 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 uh, allergic reactions, especially in between its groups, and also it can cause seizures activity, or the beta lactam can cause seizures activity. Beta-lactam need frequent dosing for successful therapeutic outcome. As I told, this uh, group of drugs need a uh, timing factor for its efficacy. And so now we prefer, and according to most of the research work, we prefer to give it through continuous infusion, like Biptazo, like uh, Ceftriaxone, Ceftazidim, and so on. Beta-lactam uh, classifications, uh, kephalosporins, as I told you, cephalexine, cephalosporin, cephalotaxin, uh, ceftriaxone, uh, penicillin, uh, benzyl, penicillin, uh, narrow spectrum, and the broad spectrum one, like Beptazo, and the carbapenem, like meropenem, imipenem, doripenem, ertapenem, and the monobactam, like asterionem. Uh, anti staphylococcal penicillins, I just memorize you. If there is a mesicillin, which is no longer marketed now, nephcillin may cause leukopenia during uh, long use. Oxacillin may cause also hepatitis if we if we use it for prolonged time. Bebracillin is the commonest penicillin, which I think use in the ICU, which is a lactazo, but take care of sodium load during its use. Because it's about 36 to 90 milli equivalent of sodium in a full daily dose. Also, take care of its uh, side effect like platelet dysfunction, because it can cause thrombocytopenia, especially in patients with renal uh, dysfunction. Also, it can give you false positive fungal infection because it gives you, uh, it, it contains fungal antigen galactomanan and it may give you false impression of aspergillus infection in your patient. Uh, remember, bebracillin cover pseudomonas, which is uh, very common and very important against pseudomonas. The do uh, doses, as I told in the first slide, you have to uh, consider and give attention to the right dose. But that's one of the drugs which you use, we have to use frequent doses or continuous infusion because it depends on time factor for its efficacy, and so we use it. 4.5 gram per uh, six hour, better than every eight hour, and better to give it through infusion. And really, the infusion of beta lactam drugs uh, decrease the, uh, uh, the, the toxicity of the drug and decrease the nephrotoxicity. Uh, if we start to give idea about the kephalosporin spectrum, we have uh, now about seven generation of kephalosporin. Uh, First generation is as uh, cefazolin, and it can attack the mesicillin staph sensitive, staph aureus, E. coli, K. 
epilepsial, no activity versus the enterococci. Most of the cephalosporin mostly not affect enterococci. Second generation, cefoxetine and cefotitan, and it is uh, cover, it can cover bacteroids as fragile as resistance increasing, you know? and as we increase in generation, the covering of anaerobic antibiotic by cephalosporin is decreasing. And we can see the first generation and the second generation may affect the anaerobic, uh, like uh, bacteria, uh, fragile as bacteroids. But after we're going into the third and fourth, and, um, it, it is not effective against an error. Uh, third generation safe reaction and the start is the gram negative activity, as you know, uh, and the spectrum would be extended more better and more wide. And the take care safe reaction may cause some biliary stones and the biliary sludge, and so it is not good in cases of biliary infection. Fourth generation as ceftazidim, cefibim, and they start here the efficacy of cephalosporins against anti pseudomonal infection. Cefibim and the ceftazidim, effective against the gram negative and also anti pseudomonas at the same time. Fifth generation, ceftarolin, and this is the only cephalosporin drug which can be used for MRSA, for mesicillin resistant staph colitis. This is the only cephalosporin, ceftarolin, for covering MRSA or mesicillin resistant staph. Sixth generation and the fifth and the seventh generation really for the multi resistant organism as extended spectrum beta lactam and gram negative bacilli, like ceftulazone, tazobactam, combination, very effective. And we reserve it for very potent or very uh, highly infected patients. Also, the second generation with ceftazidine with AV bactam, and it can cover extensive spectrum DL, and also gram negative bacilli and clepsilia carbonates. No activity versus anaerobic organism. Only the second and the fifth generation of cephalosporins active in the host. And the take care of allergy decreases with going up in cephalosporin generation. As we go up from the first to the seventh generations, the allergy complication uh, decreases from cephalosporin. Cephibim, if we speak a uh, short note about cephibim and the ceftazidim, cephibim indicated in bacteremia, pneumonia, skin and soft tissue infection, in febrile neutropenic patient, urinary tract infection, gynecological uh, infection, and the abdominal infection. Use high dose to get an efficacy. Really, it needs at least two grams every eight hour IV and other patients. But also can cover the gram positive and the gram negative. Gram positive uh, enhances activity, including the MRSA and the pneumococcus, compared to ceftazidine. About enhanced activity for MRSA, it is query, really. And some research against it and using in, in, uh, with vancomycin as an enhancing action against uh, MRSA infection. CFB also cover gram negative roads as enhanced, enhanced activity against extended spectrum beta lactamase producing roads, better seal wall penetration, less affinity for some beta lactamases, and binds to multiple penicillin binding protein. And really, it is a very good drug, CVB, and we depend on it sometimes in the other field. Cephibim drug uh, level are insufficient in patients with severe infection. Always in severe infection, the uh, drug doses need to be increased to some extent, especially in Cephibim and Septazidim and Vancomycin. We increase Cephibim to two grams, as I told you, every eight hours for highly septic patients. Don't forget, there are now nine current drugs active against MRSA, mesicillin resistant staph aureus, which are Vancomycin and it's still the best drug, really. Vancomycin. Tilipanzin, albavancin, oritavancin, daptomycin, ceftarolin, cephalosporin, lionzolid, oxazolidone, and tizolid, oxazolidone, also, and clindamycin. Nine drugs now you have to cover MRSA infection. Suppose your patient is suffering from sepsis with staph aureus and you don't know. 
which is infection with uh, staph aureus, micellin sensitive, or micellin resistant? Which drug you use, Vanco or Dapto or Oxacillin only? If, the, if you don't know the organism, but you just know it is a staph infection or a staph sepsis, you have to give Vancomycin or Dapto or Daptomycin. If, the, if you know it's only staph, sensitive staph, you have to get oxacillin, uh, not oxacillin with vancomycin. But if, it, if you don't know, you have to get the combined vanco and oxacillin. In oxacillin sensitive, you can give oxacillin only or cefazolin, uh, ferrazolin or uh, uh, cephalosporin covering the staph. In oxacillin resistance, you have to give vancomycin or daptomycin. Suppose your MIC in your patient becoming greater than two microgram per mil at time. You have two M problem now. You have to think in another drug. Don't increase the dose of vancomycin, but you have to think in another drug against the MRSA because this meaning is a patient accepting of the organism, the MRSA has started to accept some resistance to your vancomycin. How long does staph bacteremia persist on adequate therapy? You can start uh, vancomycin and you, uh, you pass in the correct pathway and you manage correctly, but the still you can reveal some staphylococci in your culture. And so if the organism can stay in the culture for up to more than seven days, sometimes three, four days, sometimes more than seven days, you, you can still find the staph in your culture, in the blood culture. Uh, especially with MRSA, more than uh, uh, cellular sensitive, also in presence of endovascular infections, in suicide, and in diabetic or in immune compromised patients. And so we have to prolong your treatment for staph sepsis. Uh, staph aureus sepsis is very important. We have to take serial blood culture to determine the persistence. Especially in cases of endocarditis, which you can't review or you can't discover except through TE, trans esophageal echo. You can't predict these small, small vegetations, less than five millimeters through trans thoracic echo. You have to make trans esophageal echo and you have to make it after five or six days from infection. Before that, vegetations, I think, will not be formed. Also in septic filipitis and the sequestered locus, or in the presence of intravascular device, we have, we have to remove any device if you can, it's in case of septicemia with staph virus. Uh, also treatment of bacteremic staph aureus in a combination therapy with rifampicin or gentamicin, as we see, rifampicin and gentamicin actually for, uh, we can use it with vancomycin just for a few days, one, two, three days, just to enhance the, uh, the, uh, the efficacy of uh, vancomycin or the treatment, uh, but don't uh, exceed three days in such situations. Combination all, only if the rosetic device is present, retained or replaced, you have to combine to just give more efficacy to your vancomycin. Uh, optional uh, for three to five days to reduce the duration of uh, bacteremia. Duration of treatment of, of treatment for staph uh, sepsis or bacteremia. If the patient uncomplicated, we can treat for only two weeks. But suppose your patient complicated, you have to treat for four to six weeks. What is how I can or, or how I differentiate between complicated and uh, yeah? Suppose your patient immune compromised. Suppose your patient there is intra, still intravascular device. Suppose your patient is still uh, febrile, uh, uh, neutropenic. These patients I need need continuation. Suppose your patient accepting by echo still there is vegetations or endocarditis. Or your patient accepting some. Uh, Thrombophlebitis, you have to continue for four to six. And so we have this is very important and mandatory to differentiate between the complicated and uncomplicated and complicated case of staph infection. Staph aureus bacteremia, <coughs> we have to differentiate between complicated and uncomplicated. Uh, for the board, you can, uh, you can select the longer durations, more safe and always as i said remove the caster remove the device and you have to be 
oriented with the criteria to just only use uh, treatment for 14 days. In such situations, if the old catheters are removed or replaced through not through guide wire, no replacement, no replacement of catheter now intravascular catheter with guide wire, abandoned now, prohibited. We, you can you have to select another site. A different, uh, no fever in uh, 72 hours. Uh, not immune suppressed. Your patient not neutrogenic, not immune compromised, and so on. Blood culture is negative by 72 hours. No intravascular borosetic material, PSR guard, and so on. The transosophageal echo negative for vegetations on, on day five seven, not less than this. Don't make TEE after three days, and you told me it is negative. Okay, patient, okay, you have to wait for five seven days. Ultrasound negative for thrombophlebitis or physical examination negative for metastatic infection. All these criteria preclude you or allow you to use only two weeks of treatment. No, no. But if your patient is complicated, you have to continue for more time for four to six weeks. Look for complications of staph aureus always, we can see in staph aureus infections or staph aureus bacteria, we can see endocarditis, which is discovered through echo. Uh, back pain may be the patient complaining of osteomyelitis and epidural abscess and they start to feel weakness and numbness in the lower limb and so on. Joint pain, look for septic arthritis. All these are complications of staph bacteria. Leg weakness and incontinence, look for epidural abscess. The cardiac device or any processes removal is always preferred. The other drug is from the fifth generation of cephalosporin, ceftarolin. Ceftarolin, which I told you, effective against MRSA also. Cephalosporin with MRSA activity, active against MSSA sensitive and a MRSA malaria, a micellin, resistant staph, also against pneumococci, active against enterococcus fecalis, not physia, active against enterococcus, cephalosporin, not, not if in general, not active against enterococcus, except septarolin may be active against, but only fecalis, enterococcus fecalis. If VRE or physium, we have to use lines, we not using uh, septarolin or ventilators. Uh, actively, again, there are negative roads similar to ceftriaxone, the same spectrum. Uh, it's it was 600 milligram every 12 hour with renal adjustment. Most of the drug take care if the, your patient complaining of renal uh, problems, you have to adjust your uh, dose. I see you with cephalosporins for MRSA, breathable, but not extend, no extensive data. Ha I can use for bacteremia, ceftarolin, a really query turnout, like lanzolin, but when using or tegacycline. In cases of bacteremia, may be query these drugs if it is so efficient to cover bacteremia. Vancomycin, it is active, or have broad spectrum activity versus aerobic gram positive. Gram positive, cover gram positive, not covering anaerobic. Not covering ground negative resistance in, with uh, vancomycin resistant enterococci or vancomycin resistant staph. It, it is very rare, uh, very, rare uh, very rare, about 30 cases uh, all over the world. Bacterial killing related to time of concentration, more than MIC. Related to time of concentration, more than, more than MIC. And so as, uh, some prefer uh, giving it through infusion or giving large dose at start as about uh, uh, 30 uh, uh, milligram per kg. To, uh, to maximize the safety and the efficacy of intravenous vancomycin therapy for MRSA sepsis would be to maintain trough level 15 to 20 microgram per ml. This is the optimum therapeutic level of vancomycin in cases of treatment. 15 to 20 microgram per ml. No peak measurement, no peak measurements and vancomycin, only trough. And you have to measure the trough after four days. And, the, and the, during your, your writing the antibiotic to have, you have to ascertain 
at what time you will you want to measure the trough level at what time you want to uh, to stop your drag at for how many days don't forget the drag don't try it mess and vancomycin uh, one gram biv biv uh, and leave it forever we see many complications from such uh, uh, orders really which is not competent Vancomycin uh, bore penetration to the lung and CNS, in contrast to lanzolid, lanzolid more penetrating to lung and CNS. Resistance is still rare. Our three cases, I told you, or said the cases in over the world. Uh, don't forget the trough sample after four days for vancomycin. Vancomycin doses load with 25 to 30 milligram per kg, we prefer this high dose. Two gram for 70 kilogram, and then after that, 15 to 20 milligram per kg every eight to 12 hours. From the actual body weight, of course. Toxicity uh, take care of red man syndrome if you inject your drug very rapid, and so better to give it slowly and slow infusion. Uh, don't forget the renal complications and also toxic, and also the otic or auditory complications. And uh, really, the auditory complications you can't predict in the ICU. Especially with vancomycin, with other nephrotoxic drugs uh, like amino glucosides, because it needs audiometry recording, and your patient is can't can't tolerate audiometry, or we can't send them most patients to audio lab to check the effect of nephrotoxic drugs on the uh, auditory nerve and the vestibular nerve, and the, uh, you have to know it affects early the smallest fiber of the X nerve. And so you can't predict, you can't predict the its side effect as auditory complications except by audiograph. No one can decide if the patient affected or not except by audiograph. The patient hearing well and no problem. But he may be affected to some voice because the smallest fiber is affected early. And as you know, also it affects the vestibular nerve. As your patient starts after that to complaining of deafness, complaining of tinnitus, uh, drowsy uh, instability, and so Don't forget the leukopenia, which can be caused by uh, vancomycin. Don't forget the ITP. Most of immune thrombocytopenia, uh, immune thrombocytic uh, perbra or immune thrombocytopenia occur due to, uh, due to drugs. One of the most common drugs is vancomycin, and linezolid can cause some sort of thrombocytopenia. Linezolid causing thrombone marrow suppression. As we say. A scan may cause immunoglobulin A bolus dermatitis. Uh, as I said, the infusion with vancomycin, some prefer infusion with vancomycin, especially with high dose, 30 milligram per kg daily, uh, and others still uh, attached to the traditional one, which giving the drug daily, uh, BID daily every 12 hours. Slower onset of nephrotoxicity with continuous infusion of vancomycin, it is settled by most of the research. Avoid empiric use, especially more than three days. Don't use vancomycin more than three days, except if you if you use that empirical. If you use if, if you start your drug vancomycin in any critical septic patient with vancomycin, empirically you have to take culture before and you have to follow the culture. Don't delay or don't prolong the duration more than three days, except with cultures in front of you. Saying that you, your patient is infected with MERS, but don't give empirically more than three days. Uh, is it needed after three days? You have to ask yourself if the patient improving or no. And so, uh, do you not? Uh, do you need to draw vancomycin level? Of course, it is uh, very important to use that toxicity, renal and otic, and assure uh, efficacy of the drug. As I told you. The goal is our trough level 15 to 20 microgram per ml measures after the first dose. We need, uh, as the other asked, we, we can need big, uh, big level, no need for big level and vancomycin, only trough level, which is the minimum concentration, which is the sample taken before the starting the next dose at the end of the first. 
Vancomycin resistant itself, I, as I said, it is very rare now. It is very rare, about three certain cases. Lysolid is another drug. It is a bacteriostatic, not bacteriocidal, but it may be bacteriocidal in some cases, or if you use it, if we use it in large dose. Those 600 milligram IV or per oral BIV, no adjustment for liver or renal diseases, but really there are some liver problems and renal problems also. We have to take care. There may be minimum, but we have to take care. Adverse effects of it, diarrhea, bone marrow separation, very important. By 10th day or 12th day, you will face your patient anemic or just low RBCs and the platelets are very low and so on. And so lipoponia and thrombocytopenia after 10 to 12 days, very common. Take care also of serotonin reaction, serotonin syndrome, and the lactic acidosis. Peripheral neuropathy, the patient started to complaining of uh, some numbness in the lips and the lactic acidosis and the optic neuritis. neuritis all these complications could be uh, faced with uh, lines. Uh, but it is good drug really in penetration, in its efficacy for treating pneumonia, for treating lung infection and sinus because it, it penetrates and its level is high in the bronchoalveolar lavage uh, or CCF more than uh, serum. And so it has a good ability of penetrating CMS and lung tissue more better than bronchoalveolar. And we can use it in severe pneumonia when we failed with other drugs. Lines we read in a concern about use in bacteremia. Uh, the questions we can use it in bacteremia query, really, if it is more efficient in bacteremia or no, we have to use with it another. Possibly preferable to uh, vancomycin in cases of oxacillin resistance, staph aureus, pneumonia, and skin and soft tissue. Inhibit toxin release as does uh, clindamycin. As clindamycin, it inhibits the toxin release. Tetazolid uh, is like lorazepextro, it's like lionzolid, but it is used once daily, and the uh, serotonin uh, side effect less uh, incidence is less with this one. It could be used with, uh, for uh, vancomycin resistant through pilot VRE. Uh, lower MIC than lines of and so its efficacy and toxicity is less. Uh, nausea may, may cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, serotonin syndrome when used with other, especially when used lines of lead or tidus lead with other types of like, uh, SSRI, so serotonin inhibitors, uptake inhibitors, or monamine oxidase inhibitors, especially in depressed division or psychic vision, you have to take care may cause serotonin syndrome, and you start to face your patient febrile, rigid, and uh, accepting the abnormal movement, and so on. Advantage of uh, advanced overlying zolid, zolid, much less bone marrow suppression, maybe suppression, leukopenia, and the thrombocytopenia as so much. Once daily, you can use it once daily, twice daily as Daptomycin is a good drug. It is a, bacter it is a bactericidal drug, uh, killing the bacteria, active against almost gram positive type. Uh, those must be adjusted, adjusted when creatinine clearance less than 30. Available only IV, uh, few drug interactions, but take care it can cause some sort of uh, isomophilic pneumonia and infiltration of isomophilis to the lung. It is also inactivated by surfactant in the lung and so not affected in some lung and lung uh, infections, could be used for scan, soft tissue, bacteremia, right side endocarditis. Meningitis, it is good for CCF penetration, but limited clinical data really for its use for CMS infection. All of us uh, we use uh, kefirosporin, ciftriaxone, and other drugs with ampicillin in an old age and immune, immune suppressed division. Daptomycin toxicity, muscle pain, take care, because muscle pain, it elevates the CBK, creatinine kinase, <coughs> rhabdomyolysis, isonophilic pneumonia, chronic pneumonia, prolonged use could cause neutropenia, problems, poor penetration into lung, and the surfactant binding and inactivation by surfactant, and so not effective in lung infection. 
approve the drugs, the recent drugs, which I told you, uh, Uritavancin, Tilavancin, Dalbavancin, combination drugs for gram negative roads, which is uh, six and seven generation of ferrous forms, like Siftalazone, Tazobactam, and the Siftazidim avian. These are new drugs and very effective in resistance. Uh, if we shift now to speak about macro reads, which uh, characterized by common ring, which is the lactone ring, as erythromycin, tilyerythromycin, and azithromycin, and clarithromycin, these drugs are very effective, especially against atypical organisms like chlamydia and uh, digonella and so on, and atypical pneumonia. Mechanism of action, bacteriostatic. Actually, uh, usually, and they inhibit the bacterial RNA dependent protein cells, affecting the 30 uh, S ribosomal and the 50 ribosomal subunits, impairing the uh, protein senses. A spectrum of activity of macro leads that can cover gram positive and gram negative groups. Clarisomycin more than erythro and azithro for gram positive. Gram negative affects the more by azithromycin more than clarisomycin. Uh, the spectrum of activity, no activity against enterobacteria, but it, it can cover anaerobes, upper airway anaerobes, and it can cover atypical bacteria. The carbapenem group or carbapenem drugs like imipenem, meropenem, ertapenem, and duripenem, we have to know all these drugs cover oxacillin sensitive staff. Very effective in covering the staff. Not affecting MRSA. Carbapenem, not all of them not affecting MRSA, but all of them very effective against pneumococcus. They can also affect enterococcus fecalis only, not fecium, not affecting enterococcus fecium. Also affect very good drugs for gram negative drug organisms. All of them are effective against anaerobic. All of them are effective against pseudomonas except the ertapenem. Ertapenem really is a very good drug because it is used uh, once daily, but it is not effective against pseudomonas. But the other drugs are effective against pseudomonas, against anaerobes infection, against gram negative organisms, against enterococcus fecalis only, against, against the staph aureus not affecting MRSA. Which carbapenem should you use? Of course, uh, most of us use imipenem because it is very cheap and uh, most common drug we use, standard one. Meropenem may be uh, exhibiting fewer seizures activity. Doropenem is good for best pseudomonas covering. Ertapenem is no pseudomonas covering, but uh, few seizures activity and could be used once daily. The other group of drugs which is very common, the fluoroquinolones uh, drugs, which uh, has sebrofloxacin and levofloxacin and moxifloxacin. Sebro is covering urinary tract infection and more specific to gram negative. Yeah, can cover gram negative drugs. Gram positive uh, maybe, but levo and moxi also cover gram positive. All of them not covering enterococcus. Like phallosporins, no covering Also, anaerobes are not covering anaerobes except moxafloxacin may cover anaerobic, but we cover it effectively. For gram negative, sebro is the best, followed by levofloxacin and moxi. Moxi is the best for respiratory, and followed by levofloxacin. Uh, for uh, for gra for uh, for. <coughs> Uh, gram negative uh, for anaerobes, it, as I told you, not covering anaerobes. For uh, pseudomonas, uh, moxifloxacin not covering pseudomonas, but covered by levo and sebrofloxacin. Quinolones, in general, is a poor choice for staph aureus, in general. No activity against the MRSA or enterococcus. Only moxie has activity, some activity against anaerobes. Flashing activity against gram negative roads. About in pneumonia, in atypical pneumonia, moxifloxacin and levofloxacin, and try to use the largest dose, which is 750 milligram daily. It is a time factor 
efficacy في neurons. Gram negative infections it is not so good with neurons really, but cebro or levo is more better as gram negative. Moxi, uh, moxifloxacin not covering gram negative. Uh, don't use quinolones in cases of meningitis. Don't use quinolones in cases of meningitis or patients suffering from uh, <coughs> from uh, some sort of CMS infection. As we know, quinolones may cause some uh, side effect. Uh, seizures activity, maybe, altered mental, mental status, and many patients taking quinolones uh, suffering to you, they are, they can't uh, sleep well and they dream badly, they uh, sleep with bad dreams. Also take care of collagen, um, collagen affection, especially Achilles tendon rupture, and really it affects all tendons of the body. Take care of using it too much, it affects the collagen tissue of you of the patient. Uh, also my, my cause rash, prolonged QT, very important. And uh, macroleads also don't for, forget macroleads, causing prolongation of QT interval more than 450. Hypoglycemia may be caused by GT fluxacin. The other group, which is the important group, the amino glucosides, which depend on concentration dependent, as I told in the, in the start of the lecture, and it causes, has renal and autotoxic activity. Renal activity can cause acute tubular necrosis. Gentamicin and tubromycin more nephrotoxic than amicacin. Uh, volume and electrolyte correction. Try to uh, hydrate your patient. Try to overhydrate. Otic uh, complications, as I said, the auditory and the vestibular uh, complication, and it is irreversible, this complication, auditory and the vestibular, and that affects the small fibers and must be detected by audiogram. Uh, better to use it once daily, dosing, perhaps less nephrotoxic, and may be more effective. Well, uh, uh, I think uh, most of us are afraid of using too much uh, or for too long time, I mean, size because it has many side effects. Uh, traditional doses every eight to 12 hours, we can uh, use gentamicin, tobramycin every eight to 12 hours. We can use it every 24 hours. The dose for every 24 hours, which is the best, gentamicin or tobramycin, five to seven milligram per kg. Per 24 hours for amicacin, 15 milligram per kg every 24 hours, and I said it is a concentration dependent, uh, dependent and it is less nephrotoxic when using it as once. Uh, Amino glucoside levels uh, peak uh, for traditional one every eight, uh, six to eight hours, about three to uh, four microgram per ml. Uh, in severe cases, we can go up to up to 12. A trough for uh, 24 hours uh, <coughs> may be a trough, maybe one to two microgram per month. Uh, how to use amino glucosides, as I said, with combination with other drugs to, uh, to potentiate in cases of endocarditis and severe infection for one to three days or four days. Uh, after that, there were adverse effects of uh, amino glucosides, as we know, autotoxicity and neuromuscular paralysis. And I think most of the anesthesiologists are not using it except with uh, depolarizing. Uh, don't use it with non depolarizing, especially with patients accepting muscle disease, especially mycena graves or bari or any muscle disease. Better to not using uh, amino glucosides in such patients. Uh, extended, v, extended spectrum beta lactam, uh, lactamases, uh, as I told, the general hydrolyzed beta lactam drugs as penicillin, kefalosporin, monolactam. Uh, extended spectrum beta lactamases, we can use in such situations carbapenem. Don't use bebracillin, even if the culture show you a culture sensitivity positive for bebracillin. Don't use it. And extended spectrum beta lactamases, we have to use carbapenem, or we can use quinolones and amino group sites if the uh, uh, Of course, uh, acinetobacter and the other uh, drugs as New Delhi and the drugs which is very highly resistant, so we can use colimycin or colistine or bulimicine or phosphomycin, for, especially for urinary tract infection and tigacycline 
Among the glucosides, as Tilionam and Siftazidim Evivactam, which is a combined of seven and six generation of Kefalosporin. Uh, in the reinterrupt infections, you can use intercessant case phosphomycin, or you can use combination therapy recommended by some experts. Uh, cholestin, as you know, uh, cholestin or cholemycin, you can use it in adult 9 million units. You can give it once uh, starting dose, and after that, 3 million every 8 hours, especially in cases of uh, Acentobacter and Pseudomonas infection. Uh, these are the drugs which uh, polybexins, oh, as you know, poor penetration to lungs and CCF. And really, we face those some patients who are suffering from CNS acentobacter, CNS acentobacter. And we start to treat them with, poly, uh, with polymycin locally. So, uh, so the efficient, if it is present, or so the drain of the CNS, uh, we can use, we initiate with so many patients and accepting improvement. But they take a long time, really, to be treated with polymycin local and IV also. Local and IV. And in combination with rifampicin, uh, exhibiting improvement within one month, two months. Uh, uh, take care of polymex and toxicity as nephrotoxicity or neurotoxicity or ataxia, reversible, very oral paracysia, and so on. Uh, tetracycline as doxacycline, uh, doxycycline and demonocycline and tetracycline and tigacycline, and I think most of you know. Uh, tigacycline, which is a common drug now used from the group of tetracycline. Uh, it is a bacteriostatic, or this group, bacteriostatic effect. Uh, spectrum of activity all have similar activities, gram-positive, aerobic, pie, and rods, uh, covering staph and strep, gram-negative aerobic bacteria, and the atypical uh, doxycycline cover mycoplasma, chlamydia, rectesia, protozoa, protozoa. It is a common drug used in such situations. Uh, adverse effect, you know, the permanent discolorations of uh, toes and bone of the baby, and so not using in uh, pregnancy. Tigacycline, I think most of you are using it. Gram positive, covering gram positive and gram negative, but take care it sometimes, and it is specific for VRE and enterococci. VRE, vancomycin resistance in enterococci, and enterococci, it can cover E. coli, Klebsiella, Stenotrophomonas and also cover bacteroids, but it may cause some pancreatitis or some hepatitis side effect, and it has also some catabolic effect. Don't forget the anaerobic uh, spectrum of some drugs as metronidazole and clindamycin, tetracycline, clavionate, pepracillin, and the imipenem and the meropenem or carbapenem all cover the anaerobic bacteria. Metronidazole, as you know, covers the Anaerobic, uh, which is abdominal, candamycin, the other uh, parts of the body, upper and lower half of the body. And I think enough today.